This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Please join me as we travel around the world speaking with fellow reflectors as they navigate and experiment with their unique design. Wow. So today's conversation will be our episode zero and it's just going to be me. My name, as I said, is Annie and I'm a 5-1 reflector and I felt very drawn to to do this series because as my unique design has been playing out, there's so many things that I would like to know and when I went looking for the information, it wasn't there. And even though there's a lot of groups about, um, there wasn't really people talking about how they got here, how they're going, tips and tricks to get them through. And a lot of the information that has been presented to us is really coming through from the the student level. So from the RA files, from, you know, definitely a copy and pasting of teachings and teachings and teachings and teachings. And something just, you know, and we'll find that the more people I talk to, especially us reflectors, that we found that we want more. We want to know more. We want to learn from each other. And that's what we're going to do. That's that's hopefully what this series of podcasts and however long it goes for will deliver. I've been so humbly surprised. Let's use the language. I've been so surprised at how many people have really wanted to get on board with this. And in just in the introductions and what amazing things people are doing. So as we journey around the world, starting here in Brisbane, Australia with myself, we're going to hear so many amazing things that people are doing. They're amazing, unique individuals. And I just I love people. I love learning about people and I love talking to people and sharing in those stories. So I'm really excited and I'm so grateful to be bringing this to you. I think we'll have a few hurdles to cross just with time zones, obviously um, equipment, things will malfunction, but you know what, who gives a shit, we're here having fun, we're not doing this for any other reason besides building community and collaboration. So there's I guess my why and I think I can speak for all of us how much uh, this is needed and wanted, Uh, so yeah. As for me, uh, as I said, I'm I'm still relatively new-ish to human design. I know some people have been on experiments for 10, 12 years. Mine has not been that long at all. Uh, Honestly, when I first found out about human design, uh, inadvertently, I had my chart had come up as a projector and I didn't really resonate with it. So I kind of let it go for a while. But, you know, I was still, you know, dabbling here and there. And it wasn't until a girlfriend uh, sent me a message and just said, oh my gosh, I've just found this. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of human design? And I thought, yeah, yep, I have. And um, she said, this is so accurate. This is just me. And I thought, oh, it wasn't me, but maybe I'll give it another go. And I did and found out I'm a 5-1 reflector. And I thought, what does this mean? And as I started reading, I was one, shocked, two, sad, three, elated that, oh my gosh, I, you know, I feel seen, I feel heard. What is this? And it just became a rabbit hole that I have just kept going down and down and down and down because it makes so much sense to why I am the way I am and why I did some of the things that I've possibly done in my life or why you can rub people up the wrong way or why people only really want to talk about themselves or why you always feel the way that you feel and why it always changes. So finding human design has really allowed me to become me and and I can now go oh I don't have to be anybody else but me anymore you know and I'm just figuring this out as I go along now obviously the more awake I became is after I had my third child and I was 39 40 
And prior to that, I would lived like most people in a generator world, trying to be a generator, I suppose. I was trying to do the, the corporate gig and, you know, I thought I was doing really well. But something had started to, definitely in my late 30s, where I, I couldn't sustain it anymore and I didn't understand why. I, I, you know, I really thought, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why, why can't I hold this interest? I was always so organised. I was always so on time. Why am I now feeling really wishy-washy? And so having that third child um, with such a big gap between my second and my third, all of a sudden I just had to come to a screeching halt. And it was then that I really began to just think, I'm just trying too hard in this world. It's just not me. Why can't I do it? And I couldn't go back. And I, so I started going down different avenues and, you know, becoming qualified in different areas and working with people and mums and bubs and stuff like that that really brought me joy. And, and I felt that I could help. And I felt that with that huge empathic nature of mine that this was me and where I could go. But with those kind of things, when you're constantly there for others, especially as a reflector, the burnout again happens where you just, you become this tight coil and then it just explodes because I didn't understand my design. I didn't understand that I needed rest. I didn't understand that I need to step out of people's energy fields. So I was constantly around people, around my children. Or, you know, I was, I was always, always around people. My first two children are generators and looking back on the live with them, it was so apparent to me now, this overwhelm. It was a common theme that I had, I think, through most of my life, the overwhelm. And I know now what that was. It was just literally me not being able to tap out and be in my own space. I was constantly, always, since I was 17 years old and pregnant, I'd either had children or I was around somebody. So it was rare that I was not around people and it was very difficult. Um, I, you know, I, I drank way too much to sort of numb out a lot of the things that were going on in my life. Um, I distracted myself with gaming. There were things, so many things that I did to try and escape my life because I didn't understand me. I didn't understand how I worked. I just thought there was something wrong with me and I just needed to, why can't everybody just go away? You know, what, why, why, uh, you know, noise sensitive, things like that. Um, you can see it all now that you find this out about yourself. You can go, oh, it makes sense. And it's not to say that I'm still not sound sensitive and I still don't get overwhelmed. I just feel it a little bit more before that, that coil becomes ready to just go, Phew. I can kind of just go, okay, I need to honour who I am now and take time out, do things that bring me joy, understand that I'm very fluid and I'll wash in and out. Um, simple things like not taking anything personally from anybody else. One day they might like you, one day they won't. And that's nothing to do with me. That has probably been the most valuable lesson that I've learned is that I can feel everything that they feel in a way, but I don't attach to it anymore. I just let it go. Just let it go. Being a parent uh, and understanding who I am and understanding who they are has benefited us as a family so much. I have a generator, pure generator partner, and I have a 2 4 splenic projector daughter. She is six. And I have a manifesting generator son who runs rings around me. He's nearly five. <laughs> so that is challenging. But I teach him to respect and her and my partner to respect me and I respect them. So it's very much a give and take in this family as we learn about each other and we educate each other and and it just fascinates me how much of a better parent and partner and friend I am in knowing who they are and who I am. So during my design and my experiment, I also found out that my parents, my father, um, is a reflector. 
and my mother is a projector. So life for me was quite calm, I suppose, when I think back. You know, I was I was the one that was like going through all the challenges, but um, it was it was a passive. It was a, it was a very kind of gentle environment. There wasn't any violence or anything like that. There wasn't really any yelling. Oh, Dad would get really mad, and again, I understand why that was his overwhelm. That was that. Okay, everybody needs to f- off now, um, and he didn't know. But for most parts, he did honour. Uh, without even knowing anything about human design he honored his type now I don't actually know when he was born like what time because he's seven or he's nearly 80 so I'm not sure what profile he is but that's okay I don't need to know I think I just understand him a little bit more and and that's made you know just some of the the choices that he's possibly made a little easier for me to accept and go oh I get it now I understand and the same is with my mother, understanding her and the choices that she's had to make, you know, in a, in a world of just craziness. I think they did bloody remarkably well. So I won't go too much into it, into my story, because I think interviewing everybody else, it'll sort of come out in the wash. I've got some, well, we've got, I should say we, because we are, we've got some amazing um, guests lined up and all walks of life, uh, all different profiles and the stories that we'll be sharing I really hope will just you know either resonate with you or don't but you'll we'll be learning together about oh that's how you might get around that oh that's really interesting especially with parenting and relationships and friendships like just that in itself is worth it. Um, lastly, my, some of my friendships, speaking of friendships, you know, they, they're not as into this as what I am. And there have been a few questions asked about, well, you know, how, how legit is this? Um, and I say to them, if you could get to know yourself 1% more than you do now, it means that you're 1% better than what you were yesterday. And that's huge. You don't have to totally believe in this. You don't have to do everything that the manual says to do. Like waiting a whole lunar cycle, that that doesn't always happen for me at all. I don't I don't do that. I don't track myself by the moon. Um, I'm very aware of the or try to be aware of the transits because I started learning how to do that and, and understanding what was going on for me. Um, but sometimes, like this podcast, I just decided that this was something that I wanted to do. I didn't wait a whole bloody lunar month for it, to, you know, for that decision to manifest. I just went with it because it felt good. But other times, I might need a lot of time. And those big decisions, I have found that by taking my time, then I can really feel into it. And I always mark it in my calendar now. Like when I want to make a decision, I mark it right. This has come through to me. And I might go, this is October 12. And then I know, you know, later in the, th- the first couple of weeks of November, I'll revisit it and say, is this, is this still aligned with me? Am I, am I still looking at doing this? But anyway, these tips and tricks will be coming out along the way. So I really, really hope you can join us. Uh, I'll figure out all that subscription stuff as we go through. But I wanted to also make these videos so that you can see us, feel us, hear us, share with us flubs and bubs and all you know we're not wordsmithing here and making sure everything is is accurate there's no bad intentions of doing this at all it is a pure intention of just bringing people together and sharing their beautiful stories so thank you thank you so much for joining us and episode one will be launched next week with Amber Clements and I cannot wait to talk to her um I've read her book and she's just down the road so it's going to be the Aussie hour (laughs) can't wait to join you then thank you